Hello from Reno, Nevada. My name is Randall Monk, and this woman's name is Rana yeah, Vizane. Uh, yeah, I am. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. <laughs> okay, we're here with a gem of wisdom from Archangel Michael, and this one is from which message is this? Is from the May 2022 message. Energy is generated through frequency patterns of attraction rather than patterns of resistance or friction. Thoughts, words, and emotions have either a helpful or a detrimental effect on the physical vessel and also create a certain band of frequencies within your auric field and beyond. Thereby, your reality on the physical plane is created. The laws of the universe state that you must always experience that which you create. When you are radiating the refined frequencies of love all around you, the negative forces will not affect you. And so, let's look at it this way. We are co-creators. When we come in, look at this. You come into a family, and, and most of us that are starseed or older souls, we didn't come in at the level where we belong. We come into the level and the family that would give us the greatest opportunity to um, learn our lessons, so the karmic lessons. So you probably have a combination of those in your life who are blessings and those who are lessons, and some are a combination of that. Because we outpicture, can you accept this? I don't like it, we don't like it, and so on. But we create our reality. We have positive and negative gifts and attributes and qualities, but it's what we do with it. And we don't, when they say the world is an illusion, your view of the world is illusion. Is your glass half full or you half full or, or is it is it half empty? Are you positive or are you negative? So you begin to at a very young age to mimic your family or to bring in the qualities and so on. And a lot of them are, are subconscious memories, our instinctual mind, and our programming with our family, the religion, the culture, the race, and, and, and all of those things. Those are brought forward from their, they're fed to us. But what do you do with those things as you go through life? How do you use them? And here again, is the ego the director of your life or is your soul? Are you being dominated and controlled? Or are you a person who begins to take dominion or begins to take control? No, I don't believe that. No, that isn't right for me. And the secret is, if you begin to listen to the whisperings of soul spirit, and it starts very young, and unfortunately, a lot of times the parents talk to, you know, with their actions, with their words, and with, with the philosophy, they stifle that in these wonderful, beautiful little old souls. But a child is meant to be happy and glorious, and it has visions, and, and, and it, is, it is trained. It is trained and controlled. So as you progress and think back on your life, were you one of those that didn't dare take a chance? Were you one of those that was afraid to step out of your comfort zone? Were you one of those that moved in her herd state? Or did you keep pushing? I was one that kept pushing. I, did, I was very quiet and shy, but I always had something pushing me out of my comfort zone, wanting to know more, wanting to learn more. And so that's a personality trait. You can, can be stifled or can be developed. And so over time, like Michael said, much of the population hardly ever has an individual, an individual thought. They are in like a herd state. They're both, the most popular belief, the mass consciousness overlay, that's their environment. So what happens? Their world is negative, their, every, every, nothing goes right for them. They struggle and they wonder why they can't get ahead, why they can't do this, what all of these different things. And yet those that are out there pushing and forcing and beginning to take dominion or beginning to think for themselves and to dare to be different, 
those are the ones that begin to learn to use power instead of force. We talk so much about power and force. What is different? Force is when you're using the 340 energy and you're always struggling against and use it using more, more of the negative or the not effective type of things. When you begin to listen to the whispers of spirit and you begin to follow those nudgings that make your heart expand, that make you feel good, once you kind of get the feeling of it and the rhythm, oh, it changes very rapidly. But so many can't get packed that, past that structured conditioning that they have. And that's what's so sad. So are you ready to step out of your comfort zone? Are you ready to overcome and release all of those things? You brought in all the major things that you needed to change. All those inclinations and those habits and those impulses and the addictions, they're there telling you, heal me, please. I've talked about in the past how the addictions and those lower energy things in the first three chakras they're like little facets. They're, they're, you know, they're little memory seed atoms that are there nudging, you know, that are controlled by the ego. And those have to be healed. That energy goes out and your picture of reality, the people and the situations around you, that's what comes back to you. That's what we're talking about. You create your reality. But if you've gotten to the point where you're listening to, no, that's not the way. Do this, this is better, this is kinder. Listen to that and begin to work for the heart center for the pod, for your good, but everyone else's good, not just your own selfish interests. Everything begins to change. And so it's that simple even with the children. You begin to light up and you begin to take notice when the good things begin to happen and the miracles and, the, and, 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 and they say divine dispensations, they help. They will begin to guide and direct when they, they will do. The, the beings of light, our angelic helpers and our guides will do everything possible. Okay, okay, keep trying. Here's a, here's a little nudge for you. I had my granddaughter who's with me. She's always kind of scary sometimes. You think about something and all of a sudden it's right there. You think, boy, they're listening into everything. <laughs> <laughs> but it is kind of their way, you know, because... It's all that within you, your higher self. It's your own. It isn't someone out there. It's going through your own sacred, sacred mind, your sacred triad into your brain, into your sacred mind. So it's a part of you that wants the best for you. So, which one? Are you? Like they say, the little angel or the two wolves, the bad one and the good one, or the angel and the little rascal, the little I don't like to say devil, but you know the one that to say the ego mind. Which one is dominating you? Like they say, which one goes stronger? The one you feed. So be careful of what you think. Be careful of the actions and, and be careful for your ultimate reason for things. Like Michael said, it's better not to do something than to do it for the wrong reason. So that's the lesson for today. So what are, what are the mirror images that are being presented to you? What is your world mirroring to you? You want to know how you're doing? Look around you. Like we used to say this often, but it's a good barometer by the people you draw to you and the flow that you have. Are you getting a lot of detours, getting a lot of boulders of negative energy or something in your path? That's, that's how, well, you, how you will know what you're doing. So start where you are, ask for help, and listen and take action. Most of all, love yourself and be kind and gentle. And you don't have to like people, but you can send love to your soul. There will be any people in your life that you do not relate to, but you can send love to their higher self. That's the way of a master. Okay? So, we're with you all the way, and we enjoy coming and being with you, and we wish you the very best of everything that your higher self and your God self has to offer you. Thank you, Rana. <clears throat> yes, Michael talks about us creating our own, re our creating our reality in this quote. 
And uh, of course we do that via our thoughts, feelings, emotions, and actions. And those thoughts that carry m more emotion are gonna have a much more a powerful creative effect. So if we're, for example, worrying about something, well, that brings up a lot of emotion. That brings up a lot of emotion if we're worrying about so health, finances, relationships, anything like that. So I would say to monitor those thoughts, your thoughts, and when you notice something like that, you just need a tool to deal with it. It's that simple. So use it, consider it as a switch, to flip that switch or a trigger. It's like a trigger to switch to another thought, to a, th a positive thought or something, uh, just the opposite of what you're worrying about or concerned about. Um, that's one way to a practical application for this, this particular practice. One other thing is too, if you're projecting in the past or what happened, or if you're projecting your thoughts in the future, you're out of your moment of the now, you're out of your center of power. So learn to return to neutral and stay focused on the moment, what you're doing and give it your all, give it your very best. And that is using power instead of force. And that is using the God-given power that we are endowed with. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Thank you Randy. <laughs> <laughs> Much love and many blessings from our hearts to yours. We love you. Bye-bye. Bye now.